So there was a recent announcement from this company called Cognition Labs, and they announced something that actually did shock the entire industry as it's the first AI software engine. Right. See, I think this is a rather fascinating thing that an AI system is able to train its own models. I mean, the implications here are staggering. There's a ton of different applications, but there is one more thing that I want to show you guys from the Cognition team. And then I want to get into some of the really cool details, like the inner workings behind Devon, to give you guys a quicker update. Hey, I'm Andrew, an engineer at Cognition, and I wanted to share a pretty amazing experience I had with Devin. So I maintain this big open source repository, uh, which contains a lot of different algorithms uh, used for competitive programming. A lot of people use it, and a few weeks ago, uh, my friend texted me that you know there was actually a bug in one of the in one of the implementations. Uh, the implementation wasn't quite right when the inputs weren't uh, weren't relatively prime. I kind of glossed over that case when I was implementing it, so I never really thought about it. So I implemented a quick fix, and then I thought that I should test it, but I actually never really got around to writing any test cases. So I thought, if I don't want to do it, uh, I should just ask Devin to do it instead. So I gave Devin the repository, asked, uh, asked Devin to just check it out and start working on it. Uh, so Devin, you know, found the right repository, checked it out, you know, found all files that are in the repository, and then I told Devin what test case I wanted him to write. Uh, I just told Devin, you know, these are the inputs, and then try checking for these conditions. So Devin wrote the test without too much trouble. Uh, it was uh, Devin just looked around to understand what exactly uh, what exactly the tests should look like and what exactly the interfaces were. And with this, Devin ran the tests, ran into a quick hiccup, which was a compiler, but Devin is able to solve those very effectively and just added an extra include to fix that. And then uh, was done running this initial test. So then I asked Devin to actually expand the test a little bit. Instead of just testing this one input, I wanted Devin to write test it on all inputs. So just kind of the brute force testing strategy. I use this a lot in my tests, and I just wanted Devin to implement it so that I didn't have to worry about it. So Devin went and rewrote the test function to use four nested for loops. But this time, after Devin ran the tests, Devin actually found a uh, test failure. You know, if the code were correct, there could be compilers in the test, but you know, the tests seem really pretty reasonable, so there probably shouldn't be a failure. So Devin went and tried to debug the program for me. So Devin here actually wrote, uh, actually added a print statement to debug the outputs uh, and the uh, inputs to the failing test, reran the tests, and actually found which case was wrong. Uh, in this case, these are the inputs. And then the return value was actually negative nine. Uh, and the, the code I'm running actually should never really return negative values. So Devin realized this, and actually went looking in the uh, it went looking in the code that we're trying to test, and actually added this line of code that if extra less than zero, extra plus equals uh, you know plus equals something. And to, in order to make sure that the return value was actually non-negative. So after fixing this, Devin actually reran the tests, and now uh, now I can be confident that my code is correct and I have some tests to prove it. There was also something really fascinating that I did see was, of course, the funding. And they said that we are well-funded, including a 21 million Series A led by Founders Fund, and we're grateful to support this from the industry leaders that they do have. And what's crazy also is that they said, by solving reasoning, we can unlock new possibilities in a wide range of disciplines. Code is just the beginning. So it seems that this company, with Devon, what they're, whatever they're building, it seems that it doesn't just seem like it's going to be a software. And if they've been able to solve the issue, issue with AIs being able to reason effectively and having this agent autonomously do tasks like this on the internet, I think they can definitely gain a huge market share for the autonomous agent sector, which is going to be booming in the years 2024 and beyond. So I think that this company is very, very well poised to take a decent sized market share because there aren't really any other tools that we've seen demoed like this that are going to be that well. Now, in addition, we can also see the SWE benchmark and they talked about how it achieved very, very good results being the state of the art model. And of course, they said that the performance of Devon on the SWE benchmark is essentially impressive, especially when you consider it to the previous state of the art models, achieving a 13.86% resolution for real world GitHub issues in open source projects is actually a pretty notable accomplishment, considering the complexity and variety of problems that can occur in such projects. Now, what actually stands out with Devon is that it significantly performs the previous models. And even when those models were given additional information, such as the exact files to edit, and this actually suggests that Devon has a more robust understanding of code and the context in which it operates, which allows it to autonomously navigate and fix issues within a code base without 
explicit directions. Now, moreover, there was something really cool. Devon's ability to perform unassisted is a key differentiator. Being evaluated on a random 25% subset of the dataset indicates that the AI's performance is not tailored to specific types of problems, but rather generally applicable, which is a desirable trait for an autonomous AI system meant for real world application. So what they also did state that was rather fascinating too, was that they are going to have a technical report, which will provide greater insight into the methods and, te and technologies that enable Devon's advanced capabilities. And it's likely going to be eagerly anticipated by the AI community and the software development. And these results will be a signal of how increasingly valuable AI is going to come in terms of the software engineering community. Now, one thing that they also do talk about was the secret technique. So it states here, exactly how Cognition AI made this breakthrough and in such a short time is something short of a mystery, at least to outsiders. Wu declines to say much about the technology's underpinnings other than that his team found unique ways to combine large language models such as OpenAI's GPT-4 with the reinforcement learning techniques. It's obviously something that people in this space have thought about for a long time, he says. It's very dependent on the models and the approach and getting things to align just right. And it seems that they made significant strides in this particular thing by combining some of the best techniques that we know in AI. Now, of course, they're hinting at a proprietary blend of technologies or methodologies that they've pioneered, which could be the core of their breakthrough and the specific details of how these technologies are integrated and leveraged to achieve such breakthroughs are kept under wraps, adding an element of mystery and of course, protecting trade secrets. Now, reinforcement learning is a powerful method in AI where algorithms learn to make decisions by receiving rewards or penalties for the action they take rather like training a pet and when combined with large language models like gpt4 which already have strong understanding of human language the potential is there to create an ai that can improve itself through iterative processes potentially at a rate and efficiency that is unprecedented now the approach of aligning the models and getting things to align just right actually suggests a delicate balance and a fine tuning process that could have taken substantial time and experimentation to perfect it's actually quite a tantalizing peek into the kind of advanced ai development happening within cognition ai possibly heralding a new era of software engineering tools that could actually revolutionize the industry. Now, Andre Karpathy actually does talk about this and his tweet outlines a intriguing parallel between the evolution of autonomous driving and the automation of software engineering. It's a compelling analogy that tracks the incremental steps of AI's increasing involvement and sophistication in task completion. His progression for software engineering automation with AI begins with basic assistance and moves towards more complex and integrated functions. And this trajectory indicates a future where AI handles more of the day-to-day -day coding tasks, enabling developers to focus on higher level design and problem solving. And Devon actually represents a leap in this evolution, coordinating multiple development tools and acting with more autonomy. This actually does suggest that human oversight will shift to a higher abstraction level. And that is particularly interesting. It implies that the future of software engineers may operate more like managers or architects guiding the AI strategy rather than writing every line of code. And Carpathy also touches on the essential aspect of AI integration into software engineering, which is the user interface design. The interaction between humans and AI must be seamless and intuitive, allowing for developers to efficiently guide and correct the AI. It's not just about making the AI smarter, it's about designing environments where AI and humans work together effectively. And his closing remarks also underscore the significant changes ahead for the field of software engineering. As AI tools like Devon become more capable, the role of a software engineer will likely, will likely transform, emphasizing supervision and high-level conceptual work over traditional coding. It's actually an exciting prospect and one that carries a promise of increased productivity and the potential to tackle more complex problems than ever before. Overall, what we've seen here today was the very first in possibly a long line of autonomous AI agent software developers, but this is the first and very likely won't be the last. We know that many other companies are working on this and they've all had very similar break. It will be interesting to see what other companies come to market with their products now that Cognition have come out with Devon and it seems like they are leading the race in terms of what we are expecting when we look at autonomous AI agents, especially in the coding space. So with that being said, what do you think the future of this is? Are you excited or are you someone who is a little bit more on the pessimistic side of what's to come? Either way, your thoughts and opinions are appreciated. And if you did find value in the video, do not forget to leave a comment down below. Subscribe for future updates.